Cooper on defense. It is Connor McCarthy, a six foot seven senior, alongside Brian Hurley, and we are underway here at the People's United Center. And Tufto able to deflect it in as Hyder whips it out to center ice, finding Grant Cooper, and he'll center it ahead to Sekos. Sekos in across the line to the left side, a shot, kick save, rebound, they score! Crashing to the net is Luke Mobley for his second of the season. And for the third straight game, the Bobcats give up an early goal and they trail 1-0. Well, Phil, second goal of the season for Luke Mobley. And, you know, we've been rooting for a player with the last name Mo Mobley to score in this building so far this year. But this is not the player that we had in mind. Quick transition here by the Golden Knights to get that puck across. And a rebound left in front. No will come after it, whips it around to Lombardi. Dan, it's got to be tough. Joe, uh, Joe Dume talked about the Bobcats getting off to a quick start. And Jack Jacome makes it 2-0. And that is not the quick start that the Bobcats were looking for. No, in fact, it's quite the opposite. A very quick start from the Golden Knights after three shots from the Bobcats in the first few minutes to begin this game. This is a controllable turnover in your own end by Michael Lombardi in the corner. And quite frankly, Phil, that one's on Keith Petrozelli more than anybody else. As much run that redirected on Petrozelli, and he had to make a really tough save on that puck. As it's knocked back the other way, skated in from the left circle, a shot, and they score. And that was Nick Campoli from the top of the left wing circle and Petrozelli has given up three goals on six Golden Knight shots. Well, after we shot two goals in 50 seconds, just about four minutes later, we see the Golden Knights capitalize again. This all started with the turnover in the Bobcats own zone. It's brought back the other way and this is just a rip coming from Nick Campoli from that left-hand side. Interesting to see. Metza now winds and holds, back to the Liberatore. Tough dough, top of the circle. Deliberatory, inching in, makes a move, a shot, he scores! That extra half second allowed Deliberatory to go top roof, and the Bobcats strike on the power play to get on the board. Well, Peter Deliberatory, the defender, tied for fifth in the nation in defenseman scoring coming in, and this is the reason why he's one of the best in the nation. Watch him walk this puck in. He fakes the shot and buys himself a little bit more time. And the Bobcats, one for two on the power play. Zach Metza with it. Down to Smolanik, whips it around for Tupta. Now to DeYoung. DeYoung holds it in front, a shot, and Smolanik banks it in! It is a one goal game, 37 seconds into period number two. Well, Joe Dume told us that the Bobcats needed a fast start. They didn't have the fast start in the first period, but they get off to a fast start here. Tufto gets this puck towards DeYoung, and this is another opportunity here, Phil, where the Bobcats wait just that split second. Looking to spring into action here. That one was inches away from going in. Good play by the junior DeYoung. Hurley to the corner, Campbell up top to Hurley, now straight away to Power, lets it go, save, rebound, put on net, another rebound, and it trickled in. On a third attempt, Anthony Callen, after Petrozelli with two spectacular saves, and Clarkson once again leads by two. Well, the Bobcats during that penalty kill the last few minutes were playing a little bit of game of soccer with this puck. DeYoung had a puck go off his skate, which he took off the line, but this is a rebound. Watch the rebound by Callen. A great save by Petrozelli, sent back across the crease, and this one gets a little bit of help off of Jaden Lee as he's trying to clear that puck through the... But it comes to back of the Golden Knights with Van Ness pressuring him. So the Bobcats with their designated fourth line, and Burgard a turnover, finds the trailing Philly on a shot, and he scores! Christoph Villon with his first NCAA goal, and for the second time in the period, the Bobcats are within one. Goodness gracious, Phil. Christoph Villon came into the offensive zone like he was shot from a gun. Watch him through the neutral zone. Burgart wins this battle, gets it into a soft spot. He didn't really know where that puck was coming, but right in the left side of your frame, there comes Villon through the blue line into the zone. And back. Bobcats looking for the equalizer. The laid penalty to Clarkson. Jaden Lee to tough though a shot save. Rebound, they score! Logan Britt, his second goal of the season. And the Bobcats have come all the way back 
and it tied this one up. Well, this is some kind of resiliency by this Bobcat squad. They set up the six on five power play, what looked like a good block in front, trying to clear that puck. Okay, the Bobcats now back in their own zone. Seco stumbling a bit, gets cut off. Minute 25 left in overtime, 4-4 game. Big hit, Seco walks it in front, quick shot, big save! Puck is loose, they score! Zach Seco on the rebound, goes top roof. And it's a 5-4 overtime win for Clarkson and a heartbreaking loss for the Bobcats. Well, the heart that the Bobcats showed in this entire game, just not quite enough. And it comes with a turnover in their own zone. The first chance turned aside, but the puck is still loose and nobody picked up the captain Sekos as he's on the back door and Phil, that's just a perfect shot. Nothing you can do about that one if you're Keith Petrozelli. He made the first save, the rebound was still loose, but Sekos was able to find that soft spot in the offensive zone, put it right up and under the crossbar, and Clarkson gets the extra point in overtime. Yeah, that was that was just at the end of the day, a great pass after Jacome got robbed the first time. It was the second pass off that save from Petrozelli. Sekos got it back from Jack Jacome. A huge goal for Sekos his third of the season. Clarkson wins 5-4, but Dan, you talked